Diving is like going into space. Standing on the bottom of the ocean and looking up is something like staring down at Earth from the sky. My first time diving was surreal. I felt tiny in the ocean, inconsequential. But at the same time, I felt connected to everything around me. Fifty feet down, all of my senses are heightened. I see everything with new, attentive eyes. I hear the sound of bubbles as they leave my regulator and watch them float gently to the surface, a stream of translucent pearls. As I slowly descended deeper, I was leaving the world I knew and discovering one that was patiently waiting for me. On the bottom of the ocean, Corals dot the sand like comets in a galaxy. Fish flash by like glimmering stars, and algae drift slowly through the water like a swirling Milky Way. I wrote that reflection in 2016, while I was learning how to scuba dive. I used to think of the ocean as fundamentally separate from the dry earth that we live on. I saw coastlines as a clear division between land and water. The ocean was its own ecosystem, its own environment, basically its own planet. But the ocean is our planet. It covers over 70% of the Earth's surface and supports more than half of all living species. When we pollute our oceans, we pollute ourselves. Ocean plastics also affect coastal communities just as they do marine wildlife, so it's important to tackle this issue at every level possible. Both hurt starts and ends in our beautiful ecosystem. That's why people come here. And so, again, it's uh, counterproductive to trash the waterways that, that people are wanting to come here and enjoy. Um, but it, it does have an effect on uh, animal life. Certainly we've seen the whales stranded with, with just this large amount of, of plastics in their bellies. Um, and so there, there is a second order effect of uh, affecting the, the animals in our beautiful coastal ecosystem. Whales are the largest mammals in the world. We love them so much that we embark on whale watching tours with the hope of catching one come up to the surface. Like birds, they migrate north to south with relative consistency. And yet, even these giants are not spared from the issues of plastic. Entanglement, ingestion, bioaccumulation. All these impact the whale and can even cause death. In some cases, we get to see the effects of plastics when whales wash up onto our coast. Active industrial fishing nets and other fishing gear account for a majority of these entanglements. Whales are not meant to eat plastics. No living being is. of 8 million metric tons of plastic waste enters our oceans every year, resulting in the death of over 1 million marine animals annually. Victims of this pollution include mammals, fish, sharks, birds, and turtles. These animals are a part of our oceans and a part of our world. They have families, social groups, different methods of communication, they form vast ecosystems, essential to environmental health and the balance of nature. 
It is certainly in humanity's best interest to combat plastic pollution, but for the thousands of animals living in and around the ocean, it's a matter of life or death. They float. And when you eat them because they look like food, they're not. If you look in the ocean, you'll see all sorts of animals are eating plastic because it tastes like food, but it doesn't digest like food. And yeah. so they get all clogged up. Whales eat zodiacs. Um, leatherback turtles fill themselves up on plastic um, bags. And it kills them. Sea turtles are beautiful creatures of the sea that swim effortlessly through the waters. We see them as main characters in cartoons, as stuffed animals on shelves, and as instrumental pieces in colorful paintings or puzzles to complete. However, plastic pollution in the oceans are putting these fascinating creatures at risk. The plastic pollution problem that our oceans are faced with affects these creatures in various ways. Popular images and videos of turtles with plastic straws stuck in their nose have swarmed the internet recently, inciting a movement for reusable metal straws or paper straws. Popular companies have even changed their packaging to include strawless options. These plastic bags that find their way into our oceans are also commonly mistaken for jellyfish. So turtles and other marine species consume them. These plastic bags cause blockages in their digestive systems, ultimately leading to their death. Microplastics are easily consumed by these species and offer unique troubles for sea turtle nestings and new hatchlings, as studies have shown that microplastics alter the temperature and sediment permeability of these nests creating problems for the unborn hatchlings before they even have a chance at a safe, unpolluted life. In the future, there are many ways we can make a positive change to the health of our oceans and reduce our single-use plastic consumption. The first being reusable drink and food containers. Carrying a thermos or reusable plastic water bottle can save approximately 1,500 single-use bottles each year. Additionally, with the times we are in, disposable masks are quickly littering the beaches and oceans all around us. Investing in reusable cloth masks can help to mitigate the rapid mask buildup plaguing our oceans. The fast fashion industry also heavily contributes to the buildup of microplastic in our oceans. Popular brands throw out over 13 million tons of clothes each year, and the microplastics in fabrics get into the digestive systems of oceanic animals. Humans can potentially ingest these dangerous microplastics. A way to remedy this issue is through buying secondhand or through sustainably made brands. Additionally, produce and many other foods are unnecessarily packaged in plastic. Or grocery stores provide plastic bags for you to buy your produce. Bringing reusable produce in grocery bags can save around 700 plastic bags per person per year. Though this may seem small, if many people can mobilize to make small changes in their daily lifestyle to slightly reduce their single-use plastics, we can all make a positive difference together. When I learned how to scuba dive four years ago, I felt like I was crossing into a new world. But in reality, I wasn't. I was just lucky enough to catch a glimpse of our planet that can't be seen from dry land, and that often isn't seen by human eyes. Observing life at the bottom of the ocean gave me a deeper understanding of the connections between all living things. I started to understand why the life of a coral reef is just as important and personal as the life of the grass in my own backyard. I care about protecting our oceans because I care about protecting our home, planet Earth.